tapping in to the audio version, but man, I gotta, I gotta, I really gotta start it off with like, you know, if you really know me, you know that I'm a clumsy, stumbling, tall, lanky, <laughs> crazy guy, man. And today, like, me and my girl share a bathroom. You know, we got the his and her sinks and the nice shower, the stand up shower, the big boy tub, and all of that. So we share the same sinks. And something today happened that was like goofy on my part, like real goofy. And uh, my dumb butt, like, put icy hot on my toothbrush. Icy hot. So I put the icy hot on my toothbrush. I put the toothbrush in my mouth. I'm brushing my teeth. You know what I'm saying? I'm brushing. I'm getting it in. As of recently, y'all know I got married and everything. And like, I spent the bankroll on my teeth. I done spent about three bands on my teeth in 2021. Three to four bands. A lot of money. So I'm keeping my teeth up. I'm trying to keep them pearly whites. You know what I'm saying? Looking good. And, uh. I'm brushing my teeth with the icy hot. So I'm like, dang, baby, you buy some new toothpaste? It's tingling like. It's tingling like. Whew. Is this a mint? This a mint something? Peppermint or something? I don't know what this is. So I brush my, I keep brushing my teeth. And it's, it's getting worse and worse and worse. I'm like, golly, this icy hot killing me. Well, I wouldn't like the icy hot because I didn't know it was icy hot yet or not, but. I'm like, dang, this toothbrush, this toothpaste killing me. So I open the drawer up, and right beside, you know what I mean? I use the charcoal Colgate or the Times toothpaste because I'm I'm bougie. I got to admit to it, I'm bougie. The charcoal toothpaste because that's the good kind. That's the kind to keep your teeth white, keep your, your gums, you know what I mean, plaque free, keep you away from the cavities and everything. So I look down right next to my toothpaste. It's icy hot. Now... The moral of this story, the reason I'm telling this story, because in my youthful age, I would have panicked and would have swallowed it. And ain't no telling what would have happened if I would have swallowed it. In my youthful age, I would have panicked. But this time, I just grabbed the charcoal toothpaste, calmly put it on the toothbrush, kept brushing my teeth, gargling water, spitting it out. Brush my teeth again, gargle water, spit it out. You know what I mean? I kept that process going until I didn't feel anything no more. And I drank a whole bunch of water. I didn't swallow it. And I just wanted to say, like, that situation taught me, like, when you in something, you doing something, you going through something, and something abnormal happen, don't panic. Don't panic. Just keep, you know what I mean, calmly doing what you was doing. I got the uh, situation done. My teeth was clean. You know what I mean? I was fresh and I was ready to go. But <laughs> that's my little story of what happened today, man. And you know what I'm saying? Right now, I'm sipping on the good, you know what I mean? The good whiskey, the Tennessee whiskey. Just got through working out, leaving the sauna. Went to Barnes and Nobles, cop uh, Dr. Fauci book, Will book, and The Color of Law. I'm going to do a review on The Color of Law soon because... Like that Color of Law book, that's the one I read while I was in Barnes and Nobles. And uh, it was talking about the first projects ever created was in Atlanta. You know, I'm in the South or whatever, so Atlanta is prevalent to the conversation. So, And I'm from Knoxville, Tennessee, so I didn't know KUB had something to do with the projects being created. Not KUB, I'm sorry. TVA, the Tennessee Valley Authority, had something to do with... Uh, Projects being created and Techwood, Techwood and Westside Atlanta was the first equal housing opportunity project created in the United States. And when we think of projects in these days and times, we probably think like poor folks, the homes for black folks, poor people or whatever. But that ain't what they was created for at first. They was created to house uh Veterans, army people, people that was uh, fighting the war in World War II. Because when World War II was going on, we was using all our resources for the war. We wasn't using our resources for 
building homes. You know what I mean? That's what that book was about. But I'm just now leaving the uh, Barnes and Nobles. I'm sipping. You know what I mean? I just felt like I needed to get on the mic and take it back to the basics. Back to the basics. But before we get back to the basics, I'm going to uh, use my boy Nas. He's going to be the backdrop for this this podcast or whatever for this audio experience. And uh, we're going to talk about why I felt the need to go back to the basics, to the audio version. But let's get on into it, man. Let's play a little bit of this Nas and, and create the vibes. The Trevor Jackson Podcast. What's up, African? What's up, African? Yo, to Haiti, Barbados, Bahamas, Grenada, the wars against love, we under attack. Paris, PR, St. Thomas, DR, the war is against love, who's busting back? From New York to Botswana, London to Guyana, to every single African that's on the map. Yo, to Mexico, to Cuba, Iceland to Bermuda, the war is against love, we under attack. Scientists told us how the Mayans lived, highways and land strips for planes of land. Y'all know I'm all about love first, man. Love first, man. That's like... The main ingredient, man, love To me, anyway But the reason I felt the need to go back to the basics Because podcasting has become popular Like, very popular And uh, people are taking it to a whole nother level But a lot of people don't know what a podcast is Like, naturally, a podcast is just an audio experience It has nothing to do with the visual It has nothing to do with the live The graphics The extra things Podcasting is actually simple And I wanted to create this podcast For the people that drive trucks man For the people that's cutting hair at the barbershop For the people that's working out in the gym man And uh For my people that's on the trail jogging And they gotta get it in Or you riding your bike Or you know what I'm saying You just cooling And you you waiting on your wife And you want some Information or you want to uh, You know what I'm saying Hear a great audio experience of something And uh, This show Is something new I ain't saying I'm the smartest person in the world Or whatever but This the antidote I named it the antidote because The antidote Is normally something that Figures something out it's the opposite of not healing. It's healing. It's something that heals you. The antidote. So the antidote on this episode is about being in balance. Being in balance. The reason that uh, I wanted to get off social media. The reason why uh, I needed to take a break from like just being accessible to other individuals. Being in balance man And then knowing yourself How well do you know yourself? Hmm (laughs) Can someone else thoughts of you Alter the decisions that you're making For yourself Because you don't know who you are But let's get back to the first topic Being in balance And uh Why I felt the need to Take a break from social media Take a break from podcasting Doing the lives and all of that stuff I felt the need because I was out of balance I wasn't in balance no more And uh, I just wanted to look back over the year And see what I was doing with my time Like 2021 was a real hectic year I got a show that I want to do You know what I mean On New Year's Day about 2021 And all the experiences You got to think about it when it seemed like it was three years ago when we had the the capital burning and the capital building situation, and that was just that was this year. And uh, man, it was a lot. Like a lot of people died. Like a whole lot of individuals passed away, and people are still passing away. The year hasn't ended yet, but man, you got the uh, 
the introduction to new creations a lot of new creations it seems as if the the human experience is like hmm being damaged man but the first thing i want to talk about on balance is is it more important to unlearn the things we have been taught that no longer serves us no good and when i say that I, i'm talking about like unlearn like I know we want to learn every day We want to open up the books We want to experience We want to have conversations with other individuals But do we need to unlearn the things that Our parents taught us first That our environment taught us That commercials and television taught us Like uh, Coming up in the hood Or the neighborhoods I'm from We was taught that soul food was good for us When soul food is the reason we have diabetes And high blood pressure Uh we was taught a lot that uh, it's not agreeable in this day and age. Times have changed. We was taught to uh, basically put ourselves in a religion to be a part of Christianity or be a part of uh, Muslim faith or uh, Buddhism or the Toltec in Mexico, whatever. It's just whatever religion, but is religion really a form of separation? Do we really have our own mind? Do we really need to unlearn the things that we have already learned? Hmm. And uh everyone needs to take time for themselves and figure out what's most important. Like I love to do podcasts. I love to work. I love that I'm a married man now. I love to uh, work out. I love to do graphics. I love to indulge in healthy eating. I love to do a lot of things, but doing multiple things. I love to uh, be on social media, too, and socializing with people that I'm not in their physical presence. I like to do that, but all that stuff can knock you out of balance. And at an early age, I didn't know what balance was, but now I know what balance is. And you have to remove the things that doesn't add value to you. You have to remove uh, whatever it is that's not adding value to you. And that's just, you know what I mean? What I had to say about being in balance, like being in balance is, is, is key to your life, though. You know what I'm saying? We in the holiday season right now. It's like. Thanksgiving done passed. Christmas is coming up. We continue to celebrate these holidays. And I don't even know if they mean it's no good. We stress out about if we can do this. Are we capable of doing this? And can I buy this person a gift? Can I do this? Can I show them that I'm balling? Can I get her a car? Can I buy a house? Can I buy some Jimmy Choo's? Can I buy this scent for this person? Do this for that person or whatever. But is all of that necessary? Let me hit my... uh. Whiskey. <laughs> I know this shit loud as hell if y'all listening to this in the morning or y'all listening to this in the afternoon or whatever though, but like I was saying, we're in the holiday season, man. And to me, the holiday season is a good thing when you're amongst family. And it had some dark times also because if you think about it, like a lot of people is we we just recently had the passing of young Dolph. We just recently had the passing of Virgil, uh, a good guy I know who did the uh, intro to the Two Brothers podcast. Man, he's a friend of my cousin Jay Bush and Markel Rogers. Man, he's a he's a dope individual out of Knoxville, Tennessee. He's an R and B artist. We just had the passing of. A lot of people, and it's it's always dark around this time. Like, uh, my grandmother passed three days after Thanksgiving when she passed. It just seemed like, I wonder why is that? Like, we celebrating pagan holidays back to back to back. We got Halloween, we got uh, Thanksgiving, then we got Christmas. What do they really mean? Like, hmm. What do they really mean? For real. But... Man, the deaths, the dark times during the holiday season. 
And I don't want to continue on with that or whatever, though, but just make sure that you know yourself and you figure out what's important to you so you can keep your balance, man, and maintain your happiness. It ain't about pleasing other individuals. And this is the part that comes in when you have to know yourself. You have to know when to stop. You have to know when you ain't doing what's in your best interest. And I knew that by the nastiness of the Internet. (laughs) The nastiness of the internet. The internet is nasty right now. The reason I say the internet is nasty is because, like, the passing of Young Dolph and the consistency of people uploading images or videos of themselves to get likes, to get attention, and then they're bothered when they don't receive that attention that they thought they was getting by that picture or that video. Or that uh, content that you created. And, and 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 that's another reason why I wanted to get back in tune with my people. Like with this audio version. Because the people who listen to this audio version. If you listen to it up to this point. You appreciate the content. You're here for the content. You're here for the growth of the show. To see where the show is going to grow. And then I need practice. I got to be able to get on this mic and jump on it. And talk my talk. For real. But like uh, I'm trying to get this music up So I can play some music for y'all In the background We still using Nas as the soundtrack to this show But yeah The internet nasty man Like I don't know if I'll ever get back on uh, Certain platforms Ever again I might post for promotion for the show But the show Like to me It's uh It's personal I take the show personal Like to the people who follow Who subscribe Who share the show I take it personal man And I appreciate every last person who is involved We just had the passing of LaMichael Goins too I want to shout him out I found out about his passing during the live with uh, Jack Boy and Easy on them Jackson boys. And uh, the internet is the internet is nasty, man. I just had to get off of there for a moment, man, and 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 let it breathe. For real, the Facebook, the Twitter, the Instagram, the YouTube, the TikToks, the this, the that, and, and everything. It's just it's just a lot. But let me let Nas vibe for a minute. Garvey, H. Rap Brown, I'm Muhammad Ali, I'm Reginald Lewis, George Washington Carver, I'm Nas with incredible music. Let's do it. Let's think it of a master plan. Like the information, man, is so fast. It's so fast that uh we get things in real time. I grew up in a time that we didn't get things in real time. We got it in the newspaper the next morning, or we had to wait on the news that night to get the uh information that we wanted to receive. And the information is fast and majority of the news is negative stuff like 99.9999999 percent is negative stuff. For real. Or it's just people promoting their negativity, breakups, uh, sex, fentanyl, COVID-19, death. Uh, <laughs> uh, what else, man? It's all negativity. When you look at the stuff and if you want positive energy in your life, you want positive vibrations, you want positive uh, feelings and success and you want your work. You can create your own world. You don't have to indulge in those things. You don't have to be a part of the algorithm. You don't have to be a part of the foolishness that's going on. You can remove yourself. You have that choice. You feel as if you need to communicate with people through a social app that bad that. It's going to hinder your life is like crazy. You know what I mean? You can serve more people being off of that thing than you can on that thing. When you know your value, when you know yourself. Hmm. Real talk, though. 
And uh, when I say the majority of news is negative stuff, y'all know what I'm talking about, man. Like, you got content creators on YouTube now solving Young Dolph's murder <laughs> or attempting to solve his murder. You got people promoting negative stuff and and just doing the most, man. <laughs> I, I don't like the feature that YouTube added where people can go live like Instagram or Facebook. They're going live because these people have good quality shows or whatever. And then they go live and sitting in their car talking and it look crazy to me because that's what I'm I'm not there for that. Me personally. But uh, with that being said, taking this time off from uh, social media and taking this time off. Of communicating and making myself accessible to people I realized that there's not that many like-minded individuals That's in my presence And how I deal with that Like how can I deal with people that doesn't think like me And I think it's a good thing that I'm weird That I'm different because I know that I know that about myself And this is another point of the uh, conversation Knowing yourself Uh like uh, I like to meditate I like to do yoga A good day for me is what I just came back from doing Going to the bookstore, purchasing books Getting a bottle of whiskey Or a bottle of wine Or a bottle of bourbon Chilling man And creating content and learning And unlearning also But uh, I know I'm different And it's not a bad thing to be different It's just like You gotta know that about yourself And when you know that you're different, you can't let people change your percept perception of you because they don't agree or they think you need to change who you are for you to be in their presence, for them to accept you, for you to be in their presence. And that's what a lot of women try to do to men. And a lot of young men don't know that that's what the woman is doing. And they adapt just so they can be in her presence. But you got to know who you are, man. For real, you got to know who you are. And uh, I would love to have more like-minded individuals in my presence. I would like people that like to read. You know what I mean? Like to uh, indulge in healthy foods and like to indulge in having a healthy diet. And uh, learn more about uh, health and the benefit of feeling good You know what I mean Like people don't We don't want to feel good Like you don't want to work out You don't want to feel good You don't want to uh, Consume good foods Because of a taste The taste outweighs the feeling That's crazy Like I was just listening to uh, A Vlad interview The dude that used to work for TMZ I forgot his name He He got fired for TMZ But he had the conversation with Kanye on TMZ and he said he cried because he was addicted to food. He cried. He wanted to lose weight so bad that he couldn't control his diet and his food intake. And uh, he had to know that he was weak in that area before he could change that. And uh, when you don't know yourself, you sell yourself short for acceptance. Like you want to be accepted by... Uh, A conglomerate People that Are in a better position than you And there's no such thing as a better position than you But people that's in A perceived better position than you Or a position that you want to be in And you sell yourself short for acceptance And you don't And you know that's not who you are But You will Attempt to be that To be a part of that so you can obtain that That you want uh, I'm myself In front of everybody I don't have to change for no one For a corporate person For a person that works at the White House For a person that works at the jail uh, For a person that uh, an Attractive woman or an unattractive woman I'm going to be the same individual Because that's just who I am And there's nothing wrong with it and I'm capable of anything. I can curse. I don't have to curse. I can speak intelligently. I can speak fluent uh, ignorance if I want to. But I got to know who I am. And 
be able to uh, interact with others without throwing my philosophy around. That's how I know myself. And do others know their selves? Do you throw your philosophies around? Do you throw uh, things around that other people wouldn't embrace so you can be embraced? Mm. <laughs> That's crazy And then Like We living in a different time We living in a different time man And the reason I, I, I embrace health And stuff like that And embrace veganism and, and living a better life It's like I've been vegan for five years man And something that I want to do Starting 2022 I don't know if I'm going to do it But I'm going to attempt to at the beginning of the year I want to go raw vegan I want to go raw Like All clean foods And it's a reason why I want to go raw The reason I want to go raw vegan Is because like COVID hit They tell us to uh, uh, Boost our immune system To eat healthier To live uh, Healthier And uh we concerned with the things on our exterior, but we're not concerned with the things on our interior. And I'm more concerned with uh, my interior than my exterior. Folks can see what you're putting on your interior by how you look and how you glow and how you perceive to the world through your exterior. <laughs> and that's part of the reason I want to go raw. I don't. I haven't had the COVID vaccine. I don't plan on taking the COVID vaccine unless it's mandatory because that's going to be a foreign substance to my body. Just like meat is a foreign substance to my body. Cheese, milk, that's a foreign substance. It's just as bad as the COVID shot, my opinion. And uh, Yeah. I just want to uh, go raw. And uh, going raw, growth should be celebrated, but growth ain't celebrated to people who don't appreciate you growing faster than them. Support your support your friends, support your family if they're growing faster than you or if they're going and taking it to another levels that you don't want to take it to. Support them. And like I want to eat a clean diet and live a clean diet, like I said, because of the COVID thing. The COVID thing is just the start. My perception when I listen to the people that folks celebrate, the uh, Jeff Bezos, the uh, what's the guy that owned Tesla name? The Kanye I was mentioning his name, uh, Elon Musk. When I listen to Elon Musk, when I listen to the uh, president of the United States, it seems like they want to exclude human beings. I just seen something today that blew my mind though, and uh. It seems like they want to exclude human beings. That's all I'm saying. They want to exclude us from the uh, existence of the world. Because it's it's too many of us right now, to be honest, on this planet. It's just a multitude of people and people are having babies left and right. The, 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 the world is overpopulated, if I may say that. And uh, we hear about social media changing their names, Facebook changing their name to Metaverse. You know what the uh, Latin word for meta is? It's beyond. Go beyond. So that means they're going farther. They're going to the next level. They're going beyond. And you know, like, them, them boys just went <laughs> on their little trips out of the planet or whatever. And they might have uh, found something. We don't know that. I'm assuming right now. They might have found something and they're about to create something new. But we have the metaverse. We have cryptocurrency where all currency is becoming digital. We have this new thing that I just heard today. And I'm going I'm to pull up some audio for y'all to listen to. This new thing that we heard today. And it's uh, about robots being able to produce. We're going to listen to this, man. For real. The first living robots that can reproduce. 
in a potential breakthrough for regenerative medicine, scientists have created the first ever living robots that can reproduce. The millimeter-sized living machines, called Xenobots 3.0, are neither traditional robots, nor a species of animal, but living, programmable organisms. Made from frog cells, the computer-designed organisms, created by a U.S. team, gather single cells inside a Pac-Man-shaped mouth, and release babies that look and move like their parents. Self-replicating living bio-robots could enable more direct, personalized drug treatment for traumatic injury, birth defects, cancer, aging and more. What are Xenobots? Xenobots are neither a traditional robot, nor a known species of animal, but a living, programmable organism. They are made out of adapted stem cells from Xenopus lavis, an African species of frog. Their shape has been designed by a computer to be able to replicate over multiple generations. No animal or plant known to science replicates in this way. Xenobots will help develop computer designed organisms. I gotta pause it. Computer designed organisms. Like we are living in the world of artificial intelligence. Artificial intelligence, not real intelligence. But artificial man-made intelligence. Man. <laughs> if if it's a such thing as UFOs, if it's a such thing as aliens, I would have the right to assume that these things are not uh looking like us. They're not created like us. They could be like this. They could be something reproduced. And then how are they robots if they're made from frog cells? Like, <clears throat> is the frog cells just a vessel that the scientists put in the xenobots or put the xenobots inside of? Hmm. They might get to a point to where they can put these things in animals and put these things in fruits and vegetables and reproduce vegetables and fruit like that. It's just we live in a crazy times. But let me finish the video out for intelligent drug delivery. What are stem cells? Stem cells are special human cells that have the ability to develop into many different cell types from muscle cells to brain cells. In some cases, they also have the ability to repair damaged tissues. Stem cells repair damaged tissues. Mm. Repair damaged tissues. You know when you're hurting or when you're sore or whatever. Hmm. Is this going to be a way to heal humans faster? Cells are divided into two main forms: embryonic stem cells and adult stem cells. Embryonic stem cells can become all cell types of the body because they are pluripotent. They can give rise to many different cell types. Adult stem cells are found in most adult tissues, such as bone marrow or fat, but have a more limited ability to give rise to various cells of the body. Meanwhile, induced pluripotent stem cells are adult cells that have been genetically reprogrammed to be more like embryonic stem cells. Okay, okay, okay. Embryonic stem cells. Hmm. You yeah, know, I do a lot of studying of the body of the brain i do a lot of study of the brain i try to educate myself in all types of ways i try to do a lot of reading a lot of healing a lot of silence and uh this is weird to me this is <laughs> like a test for humans because we know that the planet is overpopulated. We know that in America we are the least disciplined individuals. We're small. And what are we willing to do for growth, for change, and for the better of the planet? I have no clue, man. <laughs> but I just want to tell y'all, thank y'all for tuning in, man. Thank you so much for listening to the audio. This is the first episode of this audio. And, you know, I said that uh, Nas would be the backdrop 
for this pod or whatever for this uh episode and we're gonna ride out with something dope man we're gonna ride out with something real dope appreciate y'all man no phony love with my boy Uncle Chop. Peace, love, and abundance, man. Make sure you go get you some money. I'm out. The Trailer Jackson Podcast.